Hi friends, I'm out with some family and foraging friends today. We're looking for morel mushrooms and I wanted to take you along to give you a beginner's guide to finding these amazing delicious mushrooms. There are many techniques for finding these mushrooms. We're just going to concentrate on one today, which is finding dead elms that are at a certain stage, that are at a certain stage in their decomposition. So get ready for a little adventure and let's go find some morels. Hi friends, my name is Kenton Whitman and together with my family, we aim to share wilderness skills, mindfulness practices, wild edible plants, family adventures, and skills that break you free from the limits of civilized life. Join us by subscribing to our channel and joining our YouTube family. The thing is, you can look up in the Highland Forest. We're going to be down here by a river today, looking. Honestly, if you're starting out, you can get more advanced than this, but if you're starting out, we're just looking for dead elm trees at a certain stage of their decomposition. The first thing you're looking for is a certain shape of a tree. And trees grow in different shapes in different environments. Here we have cottonwoods. And superficially, they're growing like the elms. They're growing really vase-like. And you see that shape? And that's what we're looking for in an elm. But again, these are cottonwoods. And the elms are usually going to be dead. So that's our first way to spot these. At this time of the year, any tree that has leaves on it, you can discount. Here you might see through the woods, a dead tree. See that? Every dead tree I see should give me an alert as a possible elm. That's step one. All right, here we have an actual dead elm and Rebecca has been using her nose. Yeah. You actually could smell mushrooms here, yeah. but the mushroom she was smelling were golden oysters. There's the old guys and here's the new guys. And right down here we have some. So not morels, but still mushrooms. Good mushrooms. Still yummy. Here's some ways to tell the dead elm. You can see that it has this bark that kind of peels off and you can see the bones of the tree underneath. Often you're gonna find big slabs of bark laying on the ground around it. Yeah, there's an elm too. Over here you can see again, there's a dead elm and you can see the bones and kind of the bark peeling away. Okay, here's a bunch of the kiddos. Brett, you can see the dead elm in front of them. And here's what they found. All right, these are morel. Here's one on the ground. Oh, I found another one. Here's a good one. Now note that they're going to be hidden down in the undergrowth. So finding them, I might look and go, oh, nothing's here. But if I'm parting the undergrowth with my hands or with a stick, then I have a good chance of finding them. Here's all the kids searching. There's that dead elm again. So I want you to really get a visual of it. Look at the branches up there. Kind of scraggly looking. You can see the peeling off bark. And from this angle, I there them. I can I see the bones of the tree. Again. The no, that's a really good question. So you just asked if these were dead elms over here. We're going to take a look at these and see what makes these different than a dead elm. This tree looks really similar. The peeling bark and you can see the bones of it. But notice this tree has, the bones are very ripply. And you're gonna see a lot of these little bottom shoots coming up off of this tree. That is a different tree. This is a dead box elder. Superficially looks the same, but not the dead elm. The other thing is that this doesn't have that same growth habit of a vase-like growth habit. Again, lots of other mushrooms out here in the woods. 
These are called pheasant backs, or I prefer to call them dryad saddle. We're looking for them to be really small like this. You're gonna find these giant, but it's the little ones that we're looking for. I'm touching it and it has a springiness, it kind of vibrates to my touch. There's a little test here to see if they're good. I'm just gonna take my fingernail. I'm gonna run down there. If that peels away really easily, revealing that kind of whiter area underneath, I know this one's tender enough and good. If it has big pores and I try that and my finger just kind of scringles across the top, then it's not really gonna be worth taking home. Of course, there's all kinds of beauty to be had in the spring forest as well. So it's about more than just mushrooms. Here's a living elm tree. And I'm not gonna come over and look under this one. It still has its leaves on it, still very healthy, and not going to tend to be a place to find morels. Here's another one you might mistake for the elms. It kind of has a vase-like growth habit. You'll notice that this one still has leaves on the top, even though it doesn't look in great shape. This one doesn't. Here, these guys have more of a silvery bark. You're gonna see these diamond patterns and these lines, these streaks that go down like this. This is a butternut. And a lot of them around us have died from a, a canker disease. They're often also gonna have a more rotted appearance to their bones, where the elm bones tend to stay very shiny and kind of silvery clear. Okay, now we're seeing a dead elm way down there. And a couple more here. You see our group has seen those and is moving right towards them. Much higher chance of finding morels there. I would even say it's worth it if you see some people gathering some after they've left to go and take a look where they were because few people will find them all. <laughs> it's a hard one to find though. It's like okay. In general, your best bet might be looking right underneath the elm, but look at the proximity that all these gatherers are using here. It's a pretty big radius out around the tree that can deliver mushrooms. Here's an example of, we have a live elm. Here we have a dead elm, but see it has almost complete coverage. You really don't see the bones except for there. Not likely over here. That one is too far gone. Note that if you've been identifying these elms, these dead elms for a while, you're gonna see trees like this, and they might really mimic what a dead elm looks like, especially from a few paces back. This is the emerald ash borer beetle, and it is creating a new pattern for us to see in the woods because it's a relatively new development. It's really attacking the ashes, and when it does, it creates a something that looks fairly similar to a dead elm until you look up and then you're going to see those opposite branching and again really even pattern compared to what the elms look like as you up your gathering game and you're out looking for mushrooms you're going to find all kinds of other wild edibles not this one however this is one of the deadliest plants in the world this is hemlock you're going to see some distinctive features here. This white dust that comes off. Notice how most leaves, the veining comes out to the tip or the point or the top of the mountain. But in these guys, the veining comes out into the valley. More goodies. We've got dock, American mandrake, or may apple for later in the season when their fruit comes right, toxic right now. And here's that elm. Now this elm, see it's all bones. It doesn't have any of its bark left on it. When you see one like that, don't even bother going up to it. I'm not going to say 100% of the time it won't have a mushroom or two under it, but in general you're not going to find them there. But Look carefully. 
This one's all bones, but right next to it, we have a little one. And that one has what I'm looking for, which is between 70 and 90% bark cover. So this one is worth looking around because of that. Sometimes they're gonna be hiding. Here's one, right there. So down in here, we have a good chance of finding some mushrooms. Okay. This is all the ones that uh, I've put in this bag. I don't know if there's well, any in other bags. It's a start. It's pretty good for how many we've found this year, so that's... Yeah, it hasn't been a great year for us, no. has it? No. no. I'm just going to put this into your mind a little bit more. Here's a live elm. Just what that bark looks like. Really getting a feeling for that bark. This one's live, so I'm not really going to look around here. Cow parsnip. Stinging nettle, so many goodies. So through the woods, maybe you can see it barely through there. I'm spying what looks like a dead elm. Let's go check it out. Okay, from here you should be able to tell me, is this a dead elm or not? Take a look at the branches. Are they thick ended and regular or are they scraggly? Do you see any bones? What does the bark look like? A little bit tougher to see bones on this one, but a little up on top. If you guessed this was a dead elm, you were correct. And it's, it has quite a bit of its bark on it still, but it's that's still really basically perfect stage here. So maybe I should have said, you know, 95% of its bark down to Maybe 60. Let's go take a look. Here's more of the body of this elm. There's the, that top break has come down here. And I wanna look all around here. These are nice because I can walk up on top of it and really get a good look at everything without stepping down on the ground and risk stepping on morels. Oh, woo, 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 woo. I do have a tree over here that I found at least one if people want to come search. And I'm calling the little kiddos over so they can do the finding. If you're an adult and you're doing this with kids, as soon as you find one, it is very likely there are going to be more. Now it is super fun to find a morel, but as you get better at this, to me it's even more fun to lead people out to scout around after you've gotten good at finding those elms. Just see one on an elm tree and then hoot and call everybody over and then go off and scout for the next one and let them do the searching. So what's going on over there? There's that one that you found the tree with me and now there's a bunch of adults and kiddos over there getting to have fun searching and you can't really see them very well <laughs> unless you look carefully. but. They're all in there looking. Chickweed. Boy, this is such an abundant place. One of the really cool things about this is that we are learning how different species interact in nature. And these interactions are happening all the time. There's predator prey, there's many cooperative interactions. And once we start to learn these, we can start to use the presence of one species to find another species. And that's the magic that we're doing here with the elms and the morels. Wasn't great for our morels, but oysters, yeah, pretty good here. 